I recently heard somebody say that men on TRT are like old chicks with breast implants. <laughs> While not totally valid, I kind of get what he's saying. And so I wanted to begin by just bringing that strange point up while I explain to you why I am not on TRT. Now, I'm not coming to you from an outsider. You gotta understand something. I was using trend of all things back in 2010, and that's how I tore my first bicep tendon. And so, not that I was ever a continuous substance user, but there were times when I was like, just willing to do whatever it takes to get to the next trophy, really. And so when I was doing strong, man, back in the day, uh, I used some substances that like, well, enhanced my performance as it's designed to do, but at the same time, it destroyed my body. And I was only on it for about six months. And if you know anything about trend, it works real fast. It works real hard. I think it's like horse steroids. So um, <laughs> very powerful stuff. Uh, way long time ago, right? That's 13 years ago. It was a long time ago. So I was probably about 32. So the reason why I'm telling you this is because I'm not like one of these purists who are out there saying, oh, you guys who are using PEDS are uh, somehow less of a man. No, I'm not saying that at all. The tits on the old chick is kind of funny, but I know where, I know what both sides look like. When I turned 40, so I'm 44 now, when I turned 40, I think uh, the year after I turned 40, I was 41, I decided to do a pro strongman or a master strongman show, right? So as an old man, you're a master now. So I competed against a bunch of old guys and um, I decided to do the legal route, right? Got with a clinic and I got on some tests. And you can go back on, on the channel about two years ago and you can see videos of me on TRT. And my head looks like a fucking tomato. I look big and swole. Strong, no doubt, but definitely abusing my body. And it wasn't even a matter of abusing the juice. Uh, I was using it with uh, the doctor's prescription, just following doctor's orders. In fact, I, I took it down a bit because what he was asking me to do was giving me too many weird side effects. And, um, and, there's, and then like when you take tests, you got to take all these other things too. So it was like, you know, they're trying to tell me to take estrogen blockers and shit like that. So my head won't be big and red like the tomato I said before. Um, it just got too complicated. But anyway, I did a little bit of research and I was like, I think I need to take less. And I was just taking a little bit every day. I was on that for about a year, man. And the truth is my libido was through the roof, right? Like I was a 20 year old again. Um, my recovery was pretty good. It was better than it is now. Strength skyrocketed. My voice was deeper. My beard was bigger and I had more hair. I think the DHT thing actually is legit because I'm starting to lose, actually lose my hair here. So, um, I came off of it though. I came off of it about a year ago and you guys see me going back into strongman right now, you know, and you see me attempting to build myself back up so that I can compete with other masters, other old guys, my age. And, um, and I'm starting in many ways, I'm starting from scratch, but I want to do it or I am doing it this time absent of any extraneous, why would you say it? Extrinsic, extra hormones and that what my body could produce on its own. And I know that I'm at a disadvantage because I know that in the sport of strongman that I know that everybody's using the test bro, right? It's just a part of the sport. Uh, I became a pro strongman when I was 29, right? Without using anything. So I have an inherent strength. Even at my older age, I have, I'm pretty damn strong. I'm pretty strong for a 44 year old guy. But I struggled while I was on it because there were a couple of things, man. First of all, it was, was the weird ass side effects. And, and listen, I know there are probably some of you guys out there that are probably like, oh, Elliot, you were doing it wrong. Listen, man, I was following doctor's orders. I was 
trying to do research and stuff. But then I started to notice that even the guys that were doing it right, there's this test look. There's a, there's a, there's a juice look on their face. And I noticed it in my face too. It's almost like their features start getting bigger. It's very easy to, and, and you know, the reason why I can point it out is because it was me. It's very easy to point out somebody when they're on test. And I know that like everybody's honest about it these days, except for the liver king, <laughs> right? Uh, but everybody's just like honest. They're just, you know, nobody's really hiding it anymore. So it's plain as this day to look at somebody and say, hey, dude, I can tell you're on, right? The face looks like Cro-Magnum man. Start looking like bulgy around here. And listen, I'm not... I'm not knocking anybody who's on it, I'm not making fun of anybody. I'm literally actually just talking about myself. I look at videos of myself and I'm like, ew, gross. So the very first reason why, and I'm going to go through the reasons why I'm not on test here. By the way, this is just another rambling video, so I hope you enjoy. Why am I not on test? Even though I'm, I, even though I'm going to win, I'm going to win a strongman show. I'm going to win a, con a strongman contest as a masters in the 198 category. So I got about 12 pounds I gotta lose, right? Right? Yeah. 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 All natural, right? I gotta lose about 12 pounds right there. So number one was, man, I honestly, it's so strange because just like the old chicks with the breast implants, most guys my age get on test so they could look better. You get it? I'm getting on the test so I can build some muscle and look young again. Why? I don't know. I can get into a rant about that in a moment. Me, I was just getting onto it because of performance. That's my, my addiction is performance. I already look good. Performance was my issue. And when I got on the test, I got ugly. Test made me ugly. TRT makes me ugly. TRT makes all the guys that are using it ugly. I look at a lot of the guys, not that I follow anybody or anything on YouTube really, but like people come across my feed and the guys that are, a lot of them are honest. And I'm like, dude, like, you look like you're on, on something. And I don't want to, I don't want to carry that around. Right? It's like with the, with the old lady with the big boobs. Like, yo, you look old. Why are your titties so big and perky? So like the guys who were like in their, you know, 50s and 60s or whatever. And they're on tests. It's like, man, like that, it, it looks, it's, it, it's a disconnect. It's a disconnect. It don't look right. It don't make any sense, right? And it doesn't mean that you need to grow old and frail and soft and weak, but there is an inflated look, just like the silicone tits. It's like, yo, you could be an old lady and have some boobs, but you know that they're going to sag a little bit. But when you're 60, 70 years old and your titties are pointing straight up, it looks dumb. It looks dumb. It looks dumb. And so it kind of looks dumb when a guy is getting older and you could tell like, damn, you, it looks like you got silicone boobs on. So, but then again, I'm not knocking anybody. Cause like I said, I'm not an outsider. I'm an insider. I've done it before myself too. So, but I'm just giving you my opinion as of late. And so number one was, I don't like the look. I don't like the test look. I don't like the big red face look, forehead getting bigger, hair receding. And you know, all the other, fake tit look of a man with taking tea. So that's number one. Number two, I don't want to say it's a moral thing. You know, even, even as I've reverted and become Catholic and a lot of you guys think I'm like, you see people even get it mixed up and they call me fundamental. Like, no, I'm not a fucking fundamental. I'm a fundamentalist. I'm Catholic. But even still, in many regards, I'm a, I'm, I'm a, Moral relativists, I'm a moral relativist, especially if it's not like spelled out explicitly in the catechism that this is a mortal sin, right? So I'm not going about it that way. I'm going about, here's, here's from Book of Yo, straight up from the Book of Yo, Elliot, not biblical, it's extra, it's extra canonical. <laughs> so sinfulness isn't just, you know, drinking drugs, jerking off, fornicating and cheating on your wife, right? Like, and of course, murder and all that kind of stuff. People, when they first, the first thing they think of when you think of sin and they're like, oh, I didn't kill anybody. I've never killed anybody. Sin, first of all, the word sin is to miss the mark. To miss the mark. That means you're not, what happens when you miss the mark? It means you're off track. You're off track. And what are you off track of? Who you're designed to be. The strongest version of me. 
And the strongest version of you and me is who we supposed to be. And anytime there is a diversion from that, there's sin. I'm a sinful man because I don't live up to my best selves a lot of times. I, I have emotional problems. I got mental problems. I got ego problems. I got all kinds of things that take me off the path that God has designed for me. And I know I'm not alone when I say that. I look back at my life a lot of times. I'm like, damn, I wish I wasn't so dumb. Damn, I wish I didn't do that. Damn, why did I say that? Right? Those are all venial sins, I guess you could say, because they're not going to send me to hell. But they have me way off from who I'm supposed to be. And who I'm supposed to be, who you're supposed to be, is based on your environment, where you're at, who you were born to, where you live, what you got, genetics, mindset, even just being born in the time that we're born in with the internet and access to all this stuff, right? You'll hear me sometimes rattle against like the uh, degeneracy of our society, but make no mistake, I don't think it needs to change. I think we just need to be aware of it because as the heart of a man changes, so does his world. The reason why we live in a degenerate world is because there's so much sin in our hearts. We're so disconnected from ourselves. Even me, I grew up without the internet. So I remember what it was like before being hypnotized by Instagram. It's like a drug. And so even today, when I say today, I mean nowadays. Man, I notice the, the bad feelings in my physiology when I'm on the screen too much. And, and, and my kids are on the screen 10 times more than me because they grew up with it in their hands and a lot of you guys too. You don't know yourself without the screen. It's sin, it creates sin. It's just a division or, or, or a split from who you're designed to be, who I'm designed to be because I'm being hypnotized by the screen. You know what I mean? And so when I say that, I'm, I understand we live in a world that attacks our hormones, the stuff that's in the soap we use, the shampoo we use, the, the stuff that we wash our clothes with, the air. This morning, I just saw those streaks in the sky, right? They, they spray in stuff, right? Spray in stuff to protect us, right? It's always to protect us, right? Uh, the food and how it's polluted and all, like even the air fresheners, uh, the soy and, and seed oils and everything. Bro, don't think I don't know that testosterone is under attack. But at the same time, does that give me license to fight it back with something unnatural? Do you fight fire with fire? Do I, fire, do I fight unnatural with natural? And I think because we live in such a consumption-minded world that we think we need to take something to fight something, right? Oh, you're sick. Take this. Rather than, hey, why don't you stop that? You get where I'm going with this? Most of the time when shit sucks, it's not because we need to take something. It's because we need to get rid of something. Consumption. Do you know back in like the early 1900s, they used to have a disease called consumption where people would cough. <coughs> oh, he died of consumption. Like in the 1800s. I don't think anybody even dies of that anymore or they give it a different name like COVID. So... With consumption, it was a disease of consumption. And most of our diseases are diseases of consumption. So we're consuming all kinds of shit that just suppresses our hormone. That makes us sick, sad, and stupid. So before, and listen, I get it. I get it. I know there's going to be comments. Oh, but you don't understand, Elliot. I was born with this. I got this problem. I have low T as a teenager. But let me ask you, how many fucking soy sandwiches are you eating a day? Oh, I don't eat that. Did you check what says on the bread? Right? How many air fresheners does your mommy have in the house? Glade plugins that are just throwing estrogen up your nose all day long. Oh, but you don't understand. Do you lift? Do you eat? And if you are eating, like, right, even if you're eating meat, oh, I'm doing carnivore. Yeah, but are you eating food that's pumped full of Pollution, right? I don't know what my tea is right now, but I get to sleep at nine every night. I wake up at 4.30 every morning. Are you on a circadian rhythm that's cyclical like that? Like, do you know what time you're going to go to bed every single night? Are you drinking alcohol? 
When I was on TRT, I was drinking wine every other night because it, I, for various reasons, stupid reasons. I was drinking wine multiple times a night. Me and my wife got hooked on wine during the pandemic. We never drank wine. Pandemic came, we had bottles in the house, started drinking wine for a year and a half, two years. For a long time. Drinking a lot of wine. And instead of getting my shit right, I decided, let me go to a clinic and get pinned. Why don't you stop drinking wine? Part of the reason why I first decided to go look into TRT is because my libido all of a sudden just dropped. I was like, damn, usually uh, I'm feeling frisky, babe, but I'm not. Maybe there's something wrong with my hormones. But I wasn't being honest with myself. I was drinking fucking red wine three times a week. Right? And I get it. It's tough. It's hard. It's just my opinion. So what else? So anyway, bro, my opinion is that I'm better off without it. And here's the other thing, too. This is where I want to go with it. I actually look forward to growing old. You know, it's crazy because our world worships youth. It's the craziest thing. So here we got like a bunch of old people trying to be young rather than embracing the wisdom and the beauty of their age, of your, of your evolution, of the growth of your soul. Ralph Waldo Emerson says beauty steals inward when you get old. The beauty steals inward. But if, you're if I'm taking extroverted hormones, I'm still pressing out. So the beauty doesn't get to steal inwards. Like you get a little bit quieter. You get a little bit softer when you get older. For a man, that's a beautiful thing. Because as a man, when you get older and you get softer, it's so you can be a supporter of young men growing up. I'm listening to this book uh, called Gates of Fire with my son. And it's about the warrior, the uh, 300, right? The, uh, the Spartans, Spartan warriors. And it's amazing how the men in their 50s, I mean, of course, they're the, they're the elders. They're the elders. They're still picking up their swords and they're still fighting. But because of the wisdom that, because of the wisdom that's associated with beauty or strength stealing in, they're great mentors to the young men. But if they were still trying to compete this is one of the fucked up things about our society when you, why young men don't have trust in older men. And so, therefore, there are no mentors, except if you're watching them through a screen because you could just shut them off. Right. How many, I guarantee whoever you think you love on YouTube. Oh, he changed my life. Like people used to say about me, meet him in real life. <laughs> you can't turn them off. You can't turn them down. You don't get the best sound bites. But a part of the reason why. Young men don't trust real men, older men in real life. It's because they're trying to compete. I'm thinking about many of these guys right now. And they're successful men, good looking men, older men, older than me. But why are you still trying to act like you're a young man? Why are you competing with the young man? Why do you, why do we have to always, I still got it. Oh, I still got it. Yeah, you still got that shit that should have been left behind. But do you have what you're supposed to have right now? Because right now, there's another sword to pick up, an inner sword to pick up, a mentor's sword, an elder's sword, a sword of love and compassion and peace and patience, right? Goodness and kindness and self-control. Why do I want to pump myself full of hormones for a 14-year-old? I don't know. So there's just a little bit maybe uh, of a poem, you could say, a little rant on my experience and what I'm thinking in terms of where our society is going, particularly as men. Where will the elders be to support young men on their way up when they're pumping themselves full of juice? You're not cool. You're not relaxed. You're not calm. You're not receptive. Right. Testosterone is an extroverted hormone. There's no receptivity. I know. Because I'm an extroverted guy in many ways. So I get it. But when I allow myself to be 
and I just sink into reality, and I accept myself as I am, I feel so much more at peace. So you young guys who are watching right now, I know a lot of a lot of guys are on juice. A lot of guys are on juice, and not even like I'm talking to old guys like me, but then young guys like you. A lot of guys on juice. It's gonna catch up on you. Again, I'm not saying that to knock you. I'm just saying that because I can see it. I've experienced it, and at some point, I'll say I told you. No, I won't. I'll be nice.